Absolute bedlam. Absolute bedlam. Absolute bedlam. Talking about topics and stuff. Absolute bedlam. Absolute bedlam. Absolute bedlam podcast. Who? What? Where? Why? Hello there. This is Dave McPherson of NB, and you're listening to Absolute Bedlam Podcast. Absolute Bedlam. Good evening, and welcome to Absolute Bedlam Podcast. This is probably the most nervous you'll see me. This <laughs> is a fucking massive episode for me. I've been trying to get Dave on for probably about 18 months. Um, how's it going, Dave? You alright? <laughs> I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy, mate, yeah. Awesome. You go with the ups, you go with the downs, I'm, I'm on and up. Yeah, yeah mm. completely. Yeah. Yeah, how's tour going? Uh, nine shows deep. Nine. Shows that I couldn't be more happy happy with. Uh, very fun. It's nice to be on the road finally after the pandemic and uh, be, be with my boys. Yeah. And yeah, we're just we're smashing it every night. Yeah. I'm really pr- proud of the guys. And it makes my life really easy. Uh, to, to be surrounded by very nice people that are exceptional musicians. So yeah, it's really cool. Do you feel like with the co-headline with Raging Speedhorn that it's a little bit mm. of pressure off of you? Um, it's a strange one because I haven't really done this co-headline bit yeah. before. So, I mean, at the end of the day, one band's going on before the other and one band's going on last. But I feel like um, as the tour's progressed, it's like a collective. Yeah. Even though they're not in me and we're not ready to feed on and but sonically we're completely different. Yeah. Um I feel I feel like we found our groove. Like they're a good bunch of lads and uh Yeah. 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 I've I've had Jim on. We all know episode. we all know our we we know our purpose, you know. Yeah. It's well the great it's the great the greater good. That's it, yeah. Like, I've had Jim on for an episode and obviously I'm gonna come and see you guys in Southampton. <clears throat> so uh which I haven't... Is, um, Guitarist. Ah. Uh, oh, you've vanished. Oh, I've lost you. <laughs> there you is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm resting you on it's all good, the man. guest information card. DIY. I love it. Yeah. DIY till death. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Right. I'm just going to quickly go on a little bit of a monologue because... Let's go. Yeah, I, I don't even like know what to say. I'm just going to stick to the script. So, uh, this is, believe it or not, quite a small list of people that inspire me on a daily basis. And I'm re- pleased to report that there's actually two members of In Me in this list. So I'm just going to reel that off. Joe Rogan, True Geordie, Henry Rollins, Billy Sheehan, who I've had on the podcast, which was fucking insane. Greg McPherson, <laughs> Joe Satriani, yeah. Paul Gilbert, Steve Vai, Rabbi Massad, my mum, shout out Gina, my son, shout out Casper, my girlfriend, Mark Plyer, Jack Septicai, Jack May and Tony Hawk. And of course, Dave McPherson. So just quickly before I forget, because I will forget because my my heart rate is probably about 160 at the moment. Thank oh, you Dad. for your service in music, Dave. Um, yeah, it's, man, like I learned to play natural on guitar. The first time I heard it, I was like, I need to learn this song. And then I learned just a glimpse with my mate Gary Seal. And uh like that riff. Man, it's, it's it's just really cool to speak to you. Um <laughs> Yeah, White Butterfly was a huge influence on me. Then I went backwards mm-hmm. and checked out Overgrown Eden. Then I learned jealousy as well, I just remembered. Um we that yeah. It's cool. yeah. yeah. So yeah. my first question really is okay. what's your approach what's your difference in approach to writing in me songs as opposed to stuff like sentiment or solo material uh there's no approach okay 
it just it's a natural thing. I go, oh guys, we to meet up, uh, chill out, play some video games, and yes. write a thing. Um, maybe I'll sing something in the shower. Yeah, it's an idea, and I'll be like, oh, I like that. That's got a weird thing. That's got a vibe. That's got a melody or whatever. Yeah, so that's just one. You know, mm-hmm. like that's one version of how we make songs. So there's probably like a hundred different versions, formulas of how we make songs. Uh, yeah. There's no approach. That it's just go right thing. What's the scenario? What's the situation? What's the circumstances? And uh, what comes out comes out. Uh, sometimes yeah. I might I might like write a whole thing and then go, All right guys, pull that apart. Let's make an indie song out of that. Sometimes we don't even have a single idea. Mm. And we just write a song somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Like, but there's no, I, I don't like the idea of uh, having a formula or an approach, so, yeah. so to speak. Uh, so yeah, it's just whatever's going on in the day. All we know is we're going to make some music. Yeah. Sort of. And yeah. very occasionally, very occasionally, we'll go, it's not happening, is it? <laughs> yeah. But most of the time, something comes out, something, some, something and then, every, you know, all five members uh, get to sort of screw with it and mess around with it. We all trust yeah, yeah. each other. It's not like I'm going, no, you can't mm. do that, you can't do this, blah, blah, blah. Tom's yeah, going to make the drum better than I will. And uh, <laughs> Mike and vice versa, you know, like, and if I suggest something as well, or the other guy suggests something to me, we all, we all, listening is very key to uh, our approach. Yeah. So for you personally... Sure, yeah. Sorry, go, yeah. That's all right. Um, for you personally, obviously, with your solo stuff, you play guitar. Whereas now in In Me, you've taken yourself off the guitar. Has yeah. that changed your world or is it still something like when you write in me songs do you still have a bit of a strum um yeah i do and i i still will probably record uh studio stuff if i write guys i'm smashing it's much better than you guys i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna do it but it's it's like a gray area it's like who cares uh as long as the song's really good but live, mm. ever since I broke my hand mm. and I couldn't play guitar at one time and John came on board, Yeah, I was like, oh, because I'm not static to a microphone stand with pedals mm. and technical riffs whilst trying to sing and remember all the lyrics yeah, and man. whilst entertaining. There's way too much going on. Whereas now I can just, I've got two acceptable guitarists inside of me. Yeah. Uh, and great rhythm section and I can um I can run around. I can sort of yeah. Got a bit dramatize of the music a little bit, make it so yeah, theatrical yeah. and go out in the crowd or I can, I, yeah. I was too static before and too constricted. Um Yeah. I'll never say never. I might do a little bit more but uh, I, I I really like just being a singer. I think my voice Yeah. You know, I, I'm 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 a proficient guitarist. Mm. I'd like to say, if I'm if that doesn't sound too no, I don't think uh, it does. Egocentric. Not at all. <laughs> but um, but I like to focus on the voice. I think my voice is uh, the key part of uh, in me, in, uh, as opposed to riffage. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I get yeah. focus on that. No, and, fair uh, enough. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing you guys at um, the Orange Box in Yeovil. Wow, and you yeah, had I that. Ben something and on guitar. Ben Konstantinovich and Simply Colt um, supporting as well, yeah. Yeah, I man. Remember. And you were all over the show playing guitar and singing, and I was like, there's no way yeah. that this guy can, like, drink and play a set. Like, holy shit, <laughs> dude. That was, like, multitasking. That proved to me that men can multitask. So, thank you for... Mankind. Well, it's not for Yeah. Awesome. Well, you do something enough. And, uh, yeah. 10,000 hours and all that. You can just it off. But, but I think now that I'm on vocals, um, 
It's just it, it, it means I'm a better singer, and I think that's probably more important than me playing guitar. Yeah, fair enough. So I've got a fan mm. question from one of my friends. He's called Jim. That's well. Showed him in me, and he never looked back. Um, what's the story behind the Pride album artwork? You got your blue lion. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, I don't really know, to be honest. So long ago. Uh, mm. I just like the idea of the band, the Pride, you know, Pride and Lions. Um, I don't know, like, like sort, sort of survivors. Um, but, but I also like water. And yeah. that's what it would be cool. <laughs> to have these underwater lions, opt- you know, octopus tentacles. Yeah. I don't know that's about it really it was a cool sort of image in my head Um, I think I think also like we wanted to create an album that was kind of optimistic and positive and something about the blue and the line the the underwaterness made it seem kind of dreamy Hmm. that's about as deep as I can get on that one it's yeah, interesting think, you say that because I've been pissing about with the uh, AI artwork. Yeah. yeah, I've seen yeah. loads of that online at the moment. Yeah, I just made something really crazy, like a photo of the band last like, night, all five of us. Mm. And then I just put it through every single filter and just put the keyword friends. And um, it's really creepy. Yeah. Stuff that comes up with, it's amazing. I'll have to check it out. But yeah, thinking yeah. about it, you've got Overgrown Eden, which is green. You got White Butterfly, mm-hmm. which is red. Daydreams Anonymous and white, is a yeah. bit of a sort of yeah, black and white. Um, I don't really know what color Daydreams Anonymous is. It's kind of orange, well, isn't a, it? A yellow, a yellowy orange thing. Yeah, yeah. scarecrow color. Harold Moth or, is or, very or grey. Tunnel. Yeah, Harold Moth, though. yeah, dark. And yeah, then, and then yeah. you got the pride. Blue. Yeah. Awesome. There we go. And then we've got Jumpstart Hope. Yeah. Um, hmm. Blue, 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 and blackish, and then uh, demons, which is our next album. Yeah, which is pretty dark and purple. <laughs> so I know online that you are concealing your set list quite aggressively, to the point where I know that you're going to play. So you know, because you unleashed a poster, and that is literally the only information that I have. Is there a chance, and you don't have to tell me, you can tell me to fuck off if you want, um, of Demons having a song in the set list of Demons? No, unfortunately. Uh, we would have loved to. Like, yeah. We love the album. It's, it's our best work. It's sort of an amalgamation of every single in the album so far, and then some, yeah. uh, in, our, in our opinion. But it's not for us to judge. It's for you guys to listen and see what you like. But um, no, we only had three rehearsals because the uh, work commitments and yeah. we didn't want to play a song yeah. and play it, you know, half hour. No, we do it properly. Yeah. Tight. Yeah. Play it in front of a crowd fully loaded, not a Next year, random the album's idea, written. Yeah. We just have to record it and uh, keep developing it. You, you keep developing it until it's finished. Yeah, and then you can't develop develop it anymore. Or well, you actually can, you can develop live versions of it and make it yeah even more interesting. Yeah, got a bit of an anecdote about when I bumped into you at a wedding. Oh. My friend Andy Branch put you on, and didn't tell me for eleven and a half months, and I don't know how he's managed to keep that secret from me. This is a while back now. There was a place in Dorchester where you pulled into a reception and I went to the toilet at this hotel and obviously you can probably tell I'm a bit of a fan and I felt like Sarah Connor in Terminator 2 because you were just in reception and I felt like I was about to fall over because you've got quite a distinctive uh, look about you and you've obviously got a guitar on your back and I was just like Andy what the fuck is Dave McPherson doing in the lobby of this hotel and it was just as you were doing the pledge campaign for Sentiment and you mentioned that you were going to oh, wow. remix or remaster or something, a song called Embers in Burning Fields. 
Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, I was that's just like, wow. uh, yeah, it's from retro. Yeah, yeah. Mm, EP so, yeah. released. That's my uh, anecdote for you. And I realised from that. I can't remember that, it. Mate. I can't that's alright. Yeah, yeah. I've done but... too many shows. <laughs> yeah. I've done too many shows where I'm surprised as well, and I hate being surprised. I think you said Good. to me, "I am about to You've got play to this." Around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you said to me, I'm about to play this wedding. The next day, I'm in the Isle of Wight. And then the next day, I've got to go back to Essex and do a rehearsal within me. And I was like, this guy's got some fucking air miles. <laughs> like, damn. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to yeah, think. It was a while ago. It doesn't I remember matter too playing, much. I remember playing Isle of Wight. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Life. Life, life, life. Yeah. Um, it, it all melts, melts into one. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So, quick, question. Quick Dorito break. Oh, hell yeah. Shout out. Cool original. I've got, uh, <laughs> I've got Raging Speed on uh, Candle oh, man. Cinema, Cinnamon uh, Ghost Leaper Sauce. Yeah, I need to check that Carry out. Carry on. That's all right. <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's currently on your musical radar, Dave? Uh, can you name two artists or bands that you're currently listening to when you're not performing? Right, uh... Today was Jamie Lemon, yeah. new album. Good friend of mine, uh, lovely man, and yeah. it's easily his best work. Mm. Um, trying to think. Other than that, I'm, because because I'm on tour, Radio Speed on are absolutely brutal. In me, are pretty heavy. Yeah, um, I'm trying not to listen to heavy stuff outside of. Uh, yeah, you know the live stuff. So yeah, nice stuff. Uh, we 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 played a gig the last night, so they're after me. Um, yeah. We played a gig uh, Nottingham Rock City. We played Rescue Rooms last night, which is basically adjacent to Nottingham Rock City. And there was a girl called Holly Humberstone. I'd never heard of her before. Checked her out. She's very good. I'm a bit of a sucker for female, uh, in you know, artists. Yeah. But that are not like like they've got integrity and uh, they've got yeah. their own thing going on. Uh, so like Tori Amos, the uh, Image and Heap, hmm. Back Flash, the Hamstrand lady, who's great. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That awesome. so, that soothes me. Because okay. I don't want to always have a barrage of metal yeah, in my face. <laughs> um, try to figure yeah. it out um, at the moment. Or I'd, I'd have to pull my Spotify thing up, but then I'd probably do the Zoom. That's all right. Yeah, um, yeah. It's all good, man. Uh, and then I do like just sort of metal bands that push the envelope a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, though. It's hard. The sugar always. The sugar. Um, uh, Tepfest was interesting. There was a load of bands. Mm. <clears throat> there was a band called Monastery, who was crazy. Like, Dillinger Escape Plan mixed with, like, uh, Sludge Core, or whatever you call it. I don't know the genres. Yeah, it's um, tricky now, isn't it? A band called, <laughs> they were called, like, Volva something, something disgusting. Yeah. <clears throat> and a South African band, and they, they the, the guttural growls. There was, like, pig squeals. Times ten. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? I could go on, but I'm. No, that's cool, man. When that's I think, enough. When I think too much, I can't think yeah, yeah. enough. I get sense. it. That's all right. <laughs> I, I get it. So Other yeah, Jamie. That, uh, to, um, yeah. Yeah. Go, go, go. Jamie Lemon's album's called The Atheist, and it looks. I've listened to a little bit of it. I've listened to probably the first half of it. I need to get back on it. It looks fantastic. The artwork on it. It, it's like a map mm. and it's got the song names as destinations yeah. it looks fucking awesome very interesting that yeah, yeah man yeah he's Fantastic. an interesting guy he messages yeah. me like yeah. um not even about music stuff like it's not like we're networking you know that he just says like hey man yeah. how's trick yeah just and checking we, in on you yeah, yeah. I think because we come from a similar place like we're both a bit Wacky, bit quirky, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah. 
maybe a bit misunderstood and we understand each other more than maybe other people do. I, I, I don't know okay, what it is. No. But I, I love him. Okay. He's diff very different to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's an eccentric character and, but a very kind, nice man. And yeah. That new album, like, you can tell mm. just by listening to Fruit that album. A, is he a talent and an amazing songwriter, but B, a nice person, good yeah. guy. And his yeah. wife, Lena. That's mm. a beautiful song, Lena, Don't Ever Leave Me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that, got me, that got me in the field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. All right, fantastic. So next question I've got, would you consider ever starting your own podcast? Because I really, really miss in media. I always want to show people the teddy bear producer skit. And there's one bit in it where I think you're playing happy to disappoint you. And you say greed is all over. And you're oh like, my fuck me, I'm man. I'm seeing I'm stars. I don't know where I am. That's just fantastic. I loved it. So I'm good. 40 years old and I'm still just childish um yeah yeah i have thought about it but it's got to be done right because yeah. everyone's doing everything like super hyper professional these days like yeah. justin hawkins rides again mm. yeah. yeah i want to do like cooking show I wanna do a little podcast just chat about mental health and things like that like make people yeah feel like they're not alone and um make a fool of myself yeah. in the name of views yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the numbers. Yeah. Um, is there any chance of in me releasing a Christmas single? I've got a name for you if you want to hear it, and it is pretty <laughs> cringe. Jingle of the week. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm actually quite open to things, but much to my chagrin, sometimes. But Gaz, Gaz knows what he wants, and and I appreciate his opinion. Um, I I highly doubt he'd <laughs> he'd go for it in me doing a Christmas single. Yeah. Um. I don't even know what we'd do, but feel free to suggest. But um, <laughs> I think Gaz Gaz would be a no on that one. Okay. He just. Fair enough. He tried. He, 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 he pulls the reins in in a in a sensible fashion, pragmatic fashion. That yeah, you know, there's no. We're not a gimmicky band, like, even though I'm wearing a stupid Christmas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, you need people like that because otherwise you'll all just pull in different directions, and there'll be so much energy, but you've got nowhere to focus it, and you'll all end up doing concept albums that are completely different. Yeah, I, I, I don't even know what we do. Mm. I don't. It's just gimmicky doing like a, a, a metal version of uh, Last yeah. Christmas by Wham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, something I just wanted to mention, it's not a question, yeah. but how on earth do you come up with some of the lyrics that you write in terms of Cracking the Whip has one of the most <laughs> profound lyrics I've ever heard, which is every snowflake pleads not guilty in the event of an avalanche. And oh. like, that to me um, just takes me to like another plane of existence. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna take credit for that. Okay. Because I read it I read it somewhere. And I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> so I can't take credit for that lyric. <laughs> Fair enough. Um but lyrics just come to me all the time. Um Sometimes I strike gold. Hmm. Sometimes I think I've struck gold, and other people go, "That's a bit shit, isn't it?" Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. I don't, I don't get right, right as block. I've, mm. I've always got stuff stirring around, and I wake up and sometimes we're like, "Oh man, really?" Mm. And then I have to reach over, grab my phone, yeah, man, and sing into it, and yeah, yeah, then yeah, shake the lyric things like. Really, you want to write a song? Three AM. Um, but no, I um. If anything, I, I wish it would slow down. Like, mm. I wish I, I wish I had less with it because there's loads of stuff that's never going to be heard. Yeah, and that's good. 
Yeah, I think Devin if, Townsend. If you write as much as I do, like with like ADD sort of constantly writing. Um, yeah, loads think, of stuff. I find stuff and go, oh my god, it's yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. But look, right, right. <laughs> and then we, uh, yeah. Devin Townsend it, has it, a, it, would, uh, it would be like a 48 hour listen through to everything yeah, I've yeah. done and go okay that 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 just sort of filtering it out but um yeah yeah luckily we've got our 12 full songs for the next album okay and, uh, and I've got my whole next solo album done like written awesome fantastic yeah I think so Devin I, Townsend I has a similar thing go go yeah where Oh yeah, he he's definitely got what I've got. Wakes up in the middle of the night and he's like, oh, and he's just like, I'm kind <laughs> of creatively cursed that once I'm in that mode of like writing, yeah, he can't get out of it, and that's why a lot of his music is just all over the place, like genre-wise, and it's just what's going on in his life at that moment. Yeah, it's really interesting how musicians were differently like. Gaz, for example, is an amazing musician, amazing songwriter, and, you know, a vital part of me. Yeah. But he'll write a song of a year. Yeah. And then there's poor old me going, ah! Yeah, yeah. Attack, like, ideas. And, um, yeah. 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 Can't complain. That's it. So, if we ever need, like, a middle eight or a bridge or whatever, it's like, right, yeah. like this, or this, or that, or this, or that. But this lyric idea, so there's yeah. always a big um, uh, grocery store's worth of fruit of lyrics yeah. and melodies. Yeah. Love it. Got two more questions for you, then I'm just going to ask you for a quick favour off recording. Okay. So, last question that's not a silly one is <laughs> what does the future look like for In Me in the next kind of one to two years? Once you're off tour, what's next? Is it Demons? Well, it's tricky because we've all got jobs. Mm -hmm. All five of us have uh, different full-time jobs. Yeah. Different annual leave, different blah, 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 of whatever. Um, I don't want to go for it. I want to get... Uh, I've got my sights on someone. I'm not going to say who management, publishing, record label, uh, merchandising, uh, everything, basically, all in one package. I want that. Um, and realistically, two tours next year. It's the 25th anniversary of Overgrown Eden. So you heard it here first. We're playing uh, Takedown Festival. Yep. I think it's April 8th. I'm going to that. Yeah, Fuck nice yeah, to man. See this. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do that, but then it's the 20th anniversary of, uh, of you know, mm -hmm. most successful the, the album that launched So we're going to do, hopefully, like some key cities, just like a five or six date thing. And then we'll do the new album and we'll create this whole new set list and obviously play like four four new songs or something and do another tour hopefully like later in the year and just I'm already working on the follow up to Demons which is our next album yeah. I'm already working on that so because I'm not allowed to write anymore for this yeah. for Demon because we've got our 12 sonic songs and they're like yeah. no stop writing yeah, um, yeah. So, so I've already started working on that and I did my solo thing um, sort of tour in between. In me comes first. In me always comes first. That's yeah, anything in my life. But yeah, uh, yeah. awesome. So, so that's a, that's, uh, other than that, I work, I, I'm a technologist and a medical supplier. Yeah, and I uh, I work for a hospital and make sure everything works and make sure all the stocks up. So. Okay, <laughs> I work for the yeah. NHS as well. So shout out. What do you do, <laughs> my Mac Murray? IT. Giving ah, people okay. brand new laptops and discovering that they're not using them. So then we take call, them back I off call, them. I call you guys here and there. Yeah, man. Does Gaz work in IT? Yeah, yeah. Gaz is in e uh, Our drummer, Tom, is a Virgin Atlantic airline 
long haul pilot, captain. Shit. Yeah, uh, John. John is like a personal trainer. Mm. I think he's that dabbles in the MMA sort of fighting stuff. Oh yeah. And uh, Mike, uh, aside from being the sweetest guy in the world, I think he works for Argos. Yeah. So yeah, we've all got yeah. our things. Yeah, yeah, of we course. We still make it work. We still make it happen. You do. You absolutely do. So, <laughs> silly question, and then last favour. Okay. Dave, you're on tour right now. This is probably quite appropriate. Mm. You're obviously munching on some crisps, yeah. so I know that you know what you're talking about. What is mm. your go-to meal deal? I don't do meal deals. What? I'm not interested in Unbelievable. buying a drink when I can get it from a tap. Okay. Um, so, I'm a weird one. I don't know. If I've, if I've got a little bit of pocket money, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll go M&S and this is yeah. like couscous, feta, rocket, spinach, thingy, rigid, whatever it is. Got ya. That sorts me out. Today I've had Nando's. Nice. We went Nando's. John, John is addicted to Nando's. He, he should probably be sponsored by them. Uh, uh, made that happen. I mean, yeah, just, um, what did we have yesterday? can't even remember. I eat quite well on the road though, like yeah, I make man. proper nice sandwiches, like continental ham, and cheeses, and lettuce and cucumber, cucumbers, uh, carrots and hummus, mm. celery, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, eat yeah. pretty well. Do you know with um, Nando's you can get 20% off if you work for the NHS? Did not know that. I've still I got did know that, but I've gotten it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm back on that. You're gutted now, aren't you? I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> well, no, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be John's new best friend. That's it. I mean, he already, he already loves me. He's the biggest indie fan of his time. <laughs> he thinks yeah. I uh, piss at him. But um, yeah. now he's going to get 20% off. He's going to love me. There we go. Yeah, I have to use my the only problem old... is I haven't, brought my, I haven't brought any proof that I work for the end yeah, yeah. on tour. I have to use Don't my leave. old ID card that says I'm like a junior IT support analyst. And they look at me like, he's 33. Can he still be a junior? It's like, look, guys, I got it. I got that photo taken and I got that ID when I was 18 and then I rejoined the NHS. Don't judge me, all right? Just serve me chicken. Let's just sort the formality out. Mine, mine, uh, mine says I'm a ward-based technologist, but I'm also a bank clinical assistant because I am. Um, yeah. Still on the bank, so sort of, you know, like some extra work and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's nice work. Yeah, it is. I like. It. Yeah, it's good. good. Uh, awesome. Good, pe- good people that I work with. Like nice people. Can't complain, really. If I had a bad boss, I wouldn't be there. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. Awesome. So you're finishing up your tour. So what's um, next? What's tomorrow? We're obviously playing Southampton on Thursday. I think we've got seven more dates. Okay. I think. Um, tomorrow, Chester. <coughs> Chester, I think there's um, Southampton. I mm-hmm. can't remember. Swansea, Swansea's in there somewhere. Hopefully it's all rooted. Um, yeah. I don't know. Fair enough. Oh, but, but Brighton is the ender. And that's going to be interesting. It's yeah. like my, uh, like, people I know in Brighton, just through making friends, as hard as that was during the pandemic. Um, mm. And then, like, my flatmate, I think a couple of my flatmates come in. So they get to see what I actually do. Yeah. I think that you won't shut up about. You're actually... being a weirdo watching yeah. Netflix in his bedroom all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Right, I'm going to leave you to yeah. it, mate. But thank you so much for coming yeah, on Absolute Bedlam. And thanks for all <coughs> the stuff that you've ever done musically. Sorry, this sort of like. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, that's right. Quite. <laughs> and I've definitely put a bit too much on the last tip. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. 
That's oh, it. Interesting. I'll do an interesting story. Go for it. Yeah. I talk in my sleep. Um, I was with Jono and Dino. And in my dream, I'd created this massive city, like water world. Hell yeah. In the ocean. And then apparently, they just went, what the fuck, what they, what's they do it? And apparently, I just sort of started talking and went, ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to begin. The doors are open. And I was asleep. I just went back to sleep. <laughs> and they were like, guys, was, what were you, what was that like? Were you just messing with us? Like, nope, I have no recollection of that. <laughs> Don't know what you're on about. There we go. No, I just literally announced that the doors were about to open to the ladies and gentlemen. God, that proper sounds like you're hosting the Crystal Maze. Will you start the fans, please? <laughs> I, I can't okay. explain my brain. That's okay. No one can. No one can, it's fine. One of the great wonders of the world. Thank you very much, Dave. Yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah, nice one, man. And uh, just don't Thank go, you. just bear with me two seconds. Thanks for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing, everyone that's not in this Zoom call. Speak to you all soon. But yeah, bear with me two seconds, dude. See you later, guys. Bye okay. bye. Absolute bedlam. Anti Spirit, based in Bournemouth, UK. Dorset Botanical Seaweed Vodka. So I met these at Bournemouth Air Show two years ago and I wanted to get them on the podcast which I've done in the previous episode and I wanted to speak to them and promote their products because I think they're onto a winner. So this is vacuum distilled for fresher flavours. Lots and lots of different seaweeds go into this amazing vodka. Doesn't taste like the usual stuff that you get from the supermarkets. It's got a bit of a sort of story to it and a bit more of a twist. It's had some awards, and I'm hooking you guys up. If you go to www.shantyspirit.com and you type in the code Bedlam Discount for either 20 CL or 70 CL bottles, then you will get 10% off your purchase. Shanty Spirit, drink to enjoy, drink responsibly. Absolute Bedlam.